Welcome to the setup manual for the HiPod X-Line. Let's begin with the cases. We've simplified the unit into two cases, one for the tube and base, and another for the accessories. The handle on these cases has been beefed up to take even more wear and tear. To begin setting up your unit, you will start with the accessory case. Find the yellow base plate with wheels inside and place it on the ground. Now you are going to want to retrieve your tube and base case. From inside this case, grab the attached tube and base and place them into the plate on the ground. You will see in the next portion of this video that on the base plate there is a ratchet that must be unlocked to receive the base and tubes. Now that the base has been inserted into the base plate, you will need to lock it into place. Find the ratchet at the bottom and turn it until it becomes tight. You can pop it out to the side to readjust its position, lock it back into place, and turn to secure the ratchet. Now we will begin the leg setup. On arrival, you will find that your HiPod legs are locked into the closed position with the leg locking pin. You will need to remove this pin and move it and the leg to the exterior hole, locking the pin through the leg itself and the bracket. You will not lock the pin either behind the leg or in front of the leg, as this does nothing to secure it before elevation. You will see that these are examples of how not to lock the leg. Again, make sure to lock the leg with the leg pin on the exterior hole so that the pin is going through the leg and the bracket itself. This locks the leg into position. At this point in the setup, you can extend the HiPod legs to their full length. Lock them loosely as you will most likely need to adjust them in the next step. Check the bubble on the top of the HiPod base to ensure that your legs are set evenly. Adjust the legs to make them level and check the bubble again. At this point in the setup, your unit should look like this, legs extended and locked into place. Shake the silver ring at the top of the base to confirm that your legs are rock solid. Any movement, readjust and try again. Once the leg is confirmed to be stable and the primary leg lock has been tightened, you can adjust the second leg lock into place. This is a redundant safety lock in case the primary lock ever gives way or slips. Both leg locks must always be used on each leg. Never extend a high pod tubing system until both leg locks are in place. You can see another view here of what these leg locks look like in their proper positions. Now, on the top of the base, just above the silver ring, you will find another ratchet. It's the same style as the one on the base plate. When it's open, you will be able to swing the tubes left and right. If you close the ratchet like this, it will grab the tubes inside of the base. This holds the tubes in the base while you're extending the tubing. You no longer need a tool to attach the HiPod head to the tubes. Simply find the head in the case and attach it to the top of the tubes. Then tighten it to the tubes with the ratchet you will find directly under the head. This will lock it securely into place. You can see a closer view of this motion here. When attaching the HiPod handle, make sure to mount the handle from the reverse side of where the pins are dangling from the tubes. Attach the handle by tightening the screw until it clamps onto the poles and holds by itself. Purchase the X17 or the X23. Your monitor bracket will include an extra Y-shaped piece that acts as a sizer for the tubes so it can fit. If you have the X31, this piece will not be included. Take the monitor bracket, open it, and place it around the tubes. Once adjusted into position, twist the silver metal screw until it clamps down on the bracket, holding it to the tubes. You can see another view of this motion here. Notice the ratchet on the LCD bracket. If you unlock this ratchet, you will be able to adjust the angle at which the LCD sits on the bracket itself. Always make sure to unlock this ratchet before adjusting the angle of the LCD. Now we will attach the head to the handle. 
On the bottom of the high pod handle, you will see two nylon cords sticking out with carabiners attached. Pull out one of the nylon cords in one direction and the other in the opposite direction, meaning that in this camera view, one will go left and one will go right. Make sure that the cords are coming out of the bottom of the handle, allowing it to rotate the head. Also, make sure that your ropes are not crisscrossed. Now, on the handle itself, you will find two large silver screws. This first one is what's called the position lock screw. This will maintain the position of the handle wherever it happens to be at the moment when tightened. If you unlock it, the handle will move again. Now the second screw on the handle is found at the bottom. It's right in between where the two black nylon cords come out of the handle. If this screw is unlocked, you will be able to pull the cords out of the handle. If you lock that screw, you will no longer be able to pull these cords out. The purpose for this is when the unit is fully elevated so that you have the cords locked and they will not slip while moving the handle up and down. During setup, you will want to leave the cord tension screw open so that you can pull the ropes out of the handle. To mount the LCD to the monitor bracket, find the groove in the back of the LCD. Match this up with the tip of the monitor bracket and slide into place. When satisfied, you can tighten the LCD to the bracket by twisting the screw in the back. This HD LCD monitor is capable of receiving HD and composite signals. For HDMI, find the standard size HDMI port and plug it into the opening on the side of the LCD. If you purchased a unit before 2017, you have a battery for your LCD that accepts two pins on a battery plate on the back of the LCD. Line up the battery on the plate in the grooves to accept the pins. Note that the ratchet on the back of the LCD bracket must be facing away from the screen to allow space to mount the battery. This is the new LCD for 2017 going forward. It uses a different battery system. Note there's a piece of Velcro on the back and there is another one on the battery itself. You will be using two ports on the back, HDMI 1 and the DC port, both marked with red arrows here. This is the battery for the LCD. The exact model may change over time, but setup will remain the same. Take the battery and use the Velcro to attach it to the back of the LCD and connect the USB port to the DC port with this adapter. This sends power from the power pack into the LCD itself. Once you have the battery connected, click the round button and it will start to glow blue. On the front of the LCD, the red button will light up, indicating power is connected. Turn on the unit by clicking the power button and then toggle through the input settings until you find your video input source. To charge the battery for the LCD, there is a short micro USB to standard USB cable that you will plug into the wall adapter. Plug it into the wall and you'll see the battery glow blue. Now let's talk about camera setup. There are two big differences between earlier cameras and current cameras. For the earlier CX220s and the cameras in that line, you'll have a battery that looks like this which attaches to the back. Newer cameras that started shipping in August of 2016 no longer have a battery slot in the back of the camera. They have a fixed shell now, and you have to plug into an external battery via the USB cord in the hand strap. You can see an image of the battery we're shipping now, although we have also shipped a white one previously. Either connect in the same way. You can connect the battery to the top of the high pod tubes via one of the brass screws as pictured here, or you can attach it directly to the camera plate where the camera actually sits itself from underneath you attach it with the screw as pictured here as well. If you're going to use the rain gear and also as a different way to mount it, you use the same brass screw and mount the battery pack to the plate under the camera directly. Also take note, the cable and remote setups will vary whether you have a camera with a battery in the back physically connected to the camera or whether you're using this external battery pack connected by USB. We will flip back and forth between the two cable and camera setups. One final note about the current USB power pack style battery, you will need to run an extension cable, which is a USB female on one end that plugs into the camera's USB cable in the handle strap to the standard USB port that is in the power pack battery. This is how you run power from the battery to the camera. You will need to click the button that is on the side of the battery so that it turns on and you will see the blue lights flash. 
Otherwise, the battery will lay dormant and not power the camera. This is important so that you don't accidentally draw power from the small internal battery in the camera. When plugging into the larger power pack, plug the USB cord into the port that says 2.4A. Otherwise, if you plug into the smaller of the voltage out ports, it will give you an error message on the camera saying the accessory cannot be used. Now, let's go back to the cameras that have a battery physically plugged into the back of them. A lot of people have been confused about how to charge those batteries. What you do is you leave the battery in the back of the camera and plug in that camera to a USB power source. This can either be a computer or a wall adapter with a USB. This is how you charge that battery. To charge the USB power pack style battery, there is a micro USB power cable similar to the one for the LCD included in the kit. And you plug that into either the wall adapter or to a USB port that is on a computer to charge. You'll see the blue lights light up until four of them are fully lit to indicate 100% charge. To set up text on screen to see your battery and record status, follow these steps. From the default screen, hit the menu button and then select camera mic at the top middle. It'll bounce you into a scroll window and then look for scene selection. Your display will change to look like this. Then on the far right, you'll see an arrow. On the bottom, go ahead and click on that and leave your screen here. You will see standby, which turns into record and battery life. Each time you turn the camera on, you will need to set this up. Now to program your camera so it won't auto turn off after a few minutes, go to setup and then scroll down until you see something that either says power save or eco mode. And then go ahead, click into that and turn power save or eco mode off. It varies based on which model you have. Also, if you see an option that says demo mode, you would want to go into that and turn that off as well. Continuing with camera settings, this is something you're going to need to do at first time setup only. New cameras shipping in 2017 have an automatic dual video record setting activated in the camera. What this does is to record two files of the same clip in two different formats. What that does effectively is to take up twice as much memory in your SD card as it needs to. So to turn this off, this is what you need to do. Go to menu. And then after that point, click on the top right icon that says image quality slash size. Then scroll down to where you find dual video record option and make sure that option is turned off. That will save you this extra file space and allow you to record longer at a time. One final note for those of you who are using the USB power pack style camera battery to confirm the correct battery is powering your camera. Once you have text on screen set up, as explained earlier in this manual, look at your screen and if in the top right hand corner you see a battery icon, either dead or partly charged or anything at all that shows a battery, that means you're drawing power from the small internal battery in the camera. You need to click the external power pack battery on the side once connected for it to take over as the main battery for the camera. Otherwise, if you use the internal battery, that camera will die within 30 to 45 minutes. Once you have clicked the external battery and it has turned on, the battery icon on the LCD will disappear. This is what you want and it confirms the larger battery is active as the power source for the camera. Now let's talk camera remotes. You'll have one of the following, the Sony Silver Remote, the Vivitar, or the Verizoom. These three remotes set up the same way. A new remote, the Black Sony, has also started going out and that has a different setup. We'll come back to that later. Different remotes have gone out over the years with different cameras. You can see this remote, the Silver Sony, has been shipping from 2010 until about mid-2015. To mount this to the handle, open up the plastic clip in the back and attach it to the plate coming out of the handle. The Vivitar remote shipped from 2014 through 2015. It has a clip on the back that if you open will attach to the same plate coming out of the handle. The Verizoom remote was introduced in 2015. It has two screws in the back which hold a metal plate into position across the back of the remote. Open up those screws enough to create a gap and then slide the remote onto the same plate on the handle. Tighten the screws to hold the remote in place. Now, to set up the top cables for these first three remotes, follow these directions. Look for the multi-port, which is on the right side of your camera, then find the multi-adapter cable, which has a rectangular skinny port and then a female D-shaped port on the opposite side. Your D-pigtail or D-cable will plug into the multi-cable. It's highly likely that instead of the D-pigtail, you have this version with the full RCA cables as well. Disregard the red, yellow, and white cable and focus on the black cable with the stereo plug. This is the only one that is used. 
The stereo jack on the D cable will plug into the female port on the long skinny black cable. The opposite end with the pins is where you plug in the remote. At the bottom of the tower for the Silver Sony, Vivitar, and VeraZoom remotes, you will have a three pin connector. Plug that into your long skinny length cable. That finishes the remote setup for cameras with a battery physically in the back of them. Now, for those of you using the black Sony remote, this is your setup. Go into your case and find this black plastic cradle. This is what you're gonna slide the remote into. You see it has a clip in the back. This is gonna attach to that plate that juts out of the handle. Slide the remote in, turn that clip sideways, and then attach it to the handle itself. You can see a close-up of that connection here. To connect the remote to the camera, the process is much simpler. There's only one cable. You can see it here. The black end goes into the camera and the white end goes into the remote. Do not reverse this as if you do, it's not gonna work. Also, loop the cable around the silver part of the handle a few times to cut off any stress or strain that might occur between the cable and the remote port. At the top, you can see where that cable plugs into the camera with that yellow tag. I'm pointing to it here. One thing I'm going to take a moment to reinforce is that you use the strain relief plate included with your unit. You can see the black plate under the camera that the cable is threading into. We'll go into more detail on this in a moment, but essentially if you use this plate, it stops the cables from pulling or dragging on the camera ports, which can damage your cable tips or the camera itself. We include this plate for an important reason, and if we find that you have damaged your camera without using this plate, it may void your electronics warranty standard with all towers is the cable strain relief plate. You can see it here. This plate will lock your cables under the camera so that they can't pull on the delicate ports where they connect. You can see you thread one cable in one of these grooves and the other in the other groove. And they will need to be facing in opposite directions so the connecting ports come out on opposite sides of the camera where the ports are available. When the cables are in place, attach your camera on top like this. And then underneath, you will screw into the camera to connect tightly using either a screwdriver or even a coin will work. With cables threaded under the camera using the strain relief plate, it will look like this. To connect to the HiPod head, find the smaller hole in the middle of the strain relief plate and attach this to the wheeled HiPod head by taking the gold screw and inserting it into that hole from beneath the plate and then tightening the secondary screw with your fingers until tight. This will keep your camera securely in place and will prevent damage from tugging on the cables from beneath the tower. Now, for all versions, take your HDMI cable and plug the smaller end, either mini or micro, into the camera. Take the standard end and plug that into the LCD at the bottom of the unit. Regardless of what remote you have, tie off a strain relief at the bottom of the L shape on the head. Take your video and LAN cables and make a slack knot around the apparatus. This will help prevent damage on your camera connecting ports. The latest towers in 2017 are shipping with a carabiner connected directly to the cables for connection at the hook on the top of the poles. You can do this instead of tying the knot if this is on your cables. But if the carabiner is not on your cables, you must tie the cables around the L shape of the head as shown. To use the camera rain gear with your unit, after the strain relief plate is in place, put the rain gear underneath of the strain relief plate and sandwich it to the head as you normally would with the gold screw. When the rain gear is in place, it should look like this. On the side, you will need to cinch the cord that is available with the plastic holder so that the hole is completely tied up and is closed. This will keep water from getting into the unit. You can see how the LCD rain gear attaches here. There's room in the back for the battery and it connects with the Velcro. Your remote rain gear looks like this. More commonly, you attach the rain gear over the remote and control with your hand on top of the plastic rather than inside, but you can insert your hand through the hole through the side of the bag should you want to. On the plate of the HiPod head, you will see a leveling bubble. This allows you to make adjustments to ensure that your horizon line will be even when viewing the field. You can adjust as such to keep the bubble in the middle. The unit is set to elevate. The camera should be mounted on the head, all cables attached, LCD on the tubes, legs locked and extended, and plate firmly on the ground. Your HiPod handle and head should be connected via the nylon cords. The X17 is three stages, the X23 is four, and the X31 is six stages. Each stage of tubing has a cam lock that secures the tube in place. To elevate your unit, unlock the cam lock, Push the tube into the air to your desired height and lock the cam lock again. This will squeeze the poles together so that they cannot move. You will see a white line on the end of each tube recommending where the placement of the tube should be locked. 
there are safety pins for the bottom stages of the high pod tubes. For the X-23, there is a single pin for the fourth stage, whereas for the 31, there are three for the fourth, fifth, and sixth stages. On the X-17, there is no pin as it's not required. Find the hole at the bottom of each high pod stage, take the pin, and push the pin through the hole. This will prevent the tube from slipping if a cam lock for some reason fails. On each stage of the high pod tubes, there is a strip of Velcro to keep the cables out of the way. Take the Velcro strip, open it, place the cable inside, and close it again. Beyond keeping the cables neat, it helps to act as a strain relief throughout the unit.